Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for a ceasefire in Ukraine after talks with Russia's Vladimir Putin in Moscow. The United Nations is ready to fully mobilize its human and logistical resources to help save lives in Mariupol. My proposal is for a coordinated work of the United Nations, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and the Ukraine and Russian Federation forces to enable the safe evacuation of those civilians who want to leave. Mr. Guterres said he came to Moscow as a messenger of peace to save lives and reduce suffering. But he admitted frank discussions took place and it is clear there are two different positions. It's after he met with Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who warned of a real threat of World War III. Meanwhile, videos are emerging of the aftermath of Russian attacks on Ukraine transportation facilities. Here, firefighters tackling a blaze at a rail site in Krasna. Wir werden über jede, über jede solche Export, uh, Anträge auf Exportgenehmigungen. Um, in other updates, the German government has agreed to send mobile anti-aircraft guns to Ukraine. The German government had previously been accused of delaying arms supplies to Ukraine, in contrast with the US, UK and Ukraine's East European neighbours. Police have released footage from the set of the film Rust, including of the aftermath of the fatal shooting of a cinematographer by the actor Alec Baldwin. In videos released, police and medics can be seen racing to the scene and body cam footage shows first responders battling to save Helena Hutchins. We need a... Yes. Yes. What I'm curious about is what came out of that bullet that went through her body and into his shoulder? The Santa Fe Sheriff also released crime scene photos and witness interviews, including with Alec Baldwin. Helena Hutchins was shot by Mr. Baldwin while he rehearsed with what he believed to be a safe gun. Let me get with my lieutenant and see, see where, we want you to, where we want you to hang out, okay? Whatever you want to do. Yes, sir. All right. Give me just a second. But police said a decision on whether to file criminal charges will depend on the outcome of future forensic work. Residents across Beijing have joined growing lines of people waiting to be screened for COVID-19 after the Chinese capital overnight ramped up plans for mass testing to 20 million people. Amid comparisons with Shanghai, where more than 1,000 cases were reported in March before widespread curbs were finally imposed on the 26 million people, many in Beijing flocked to supermarkets to stock up on food and supplies, fearing sudden localized lockdowns. Authorities on Tuesday started to close some gyms, theatres and tourist sites the day after Beijing began testing the residents of its most populous district, Chaoyang. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has made a defiant speech at a military parade on Monday night, vowing to ramp up the country's nuclear arsenal. The parade, to mark the armed forces' founding anniversary, also displayed banned intercontinental ballistic missiles. The procession also included rows of conventional weapons such as artillery, rocket launchers and prototype tanks, plus tens of thousands of goose-stepping troops. A second Ebola patient has died in the Democratic Republic of Congo days after a fresh outbreak emerged in the city of Mandanka in Ecuador province. The World Health Organization said the second fatality was a female relative of the first case. On Monday, health authorities said more than 100 people had been identified as possible contacts and a vaccine was expected to be rolled out this week. At least one migrant has died and 26 others are missing after their dinghy capsized in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Spain's Canary Islands. The Coast Guard rescued 34 people after the vessel capsized around 135 miles off the southern tip of Gran Canaria on Monday. Another two vessels carrying around 63 people were found floating in the sea around 40 miles to the south of Gran Canaria. And the Vatican says Pope Francis has cancelled his activities for the day because of a flare-up in knee pain. A statement said his doctors ordered him to rest and that he would not participate in a meeting of an international council of cardinals which advises him on church matters. Francis would normally be seated during such a meeting, indicating that the latest flare-up was likely to be particularly serious. The 85-year-old has had to curtail events in recent weeks because of the pain in his right knee. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.